Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial on VCAs. So today we're going to focus on the MicroMod 2 from IntelliGel. This unit's right here. Last time we were looking at the first channel of the Wave Boss um, and inverting VCAs in general. We talked about ring modulation, four quadrant multiplication. And if you don't know anything about those things, you should watch that video and the one previous to that, preferably. Because this unit here is designed around that concept. Now, on the front panel, it looks nothing like a VCA. If we ignore these outputs here, and these controls here for a moment and just focus on the center section. You'll see an X and a Y input and a ring output. So if we plug the ring input into our mixer and a sine wave into the X output, you should see the sine wave on the scope. And then we plug a simple fixed control voltage into the Y input as we start to add control voltage you will see the sine wave starting to come out of the ring output now what we've done here is we've simply added some bias to the to the unit I wanted to show you this in case you have a ring modulator or a VCA which does not have a bias setting you can in fact by using any fixed console voltage set your bias now the triad is a mixer it sums all the inputs out to this uh, last channel so we could in fact plug an envelope in here which would get mixed with the fixed CV amount or our bias and giving us the same control as we have for an example on the UVCA. Just wanted to quickly show you that. So anyway, the UMOD is based around the ring modulation concept. What we have looked at in previous segments is non-musical amplitude modulation or ring modulation. What this means is that the modulator signal is not musically relevant to the carrier signal. So it's set at just some pitch and then modulates away from that. Now, I wanted to use the opportunity to show you musically relevant amplitude modulation and ring modulation. So here I have another oscillator. This one is following the pitch of the other oscillator. So now the tones we are getting out maybe a little bit more musically pleasant. You can of course change the ratio or the distance between carrier and modulator, giving us a wide variety of timbres. So I just wanted to show you this. So we can both use non-musically relevant pitches for amplitude modulation and ring modulation and musically relevant as well. Non-musically relevant uh, pitches are better for sound effects, drums, percussion, but if you want to imitate musical instruments then musically relevant pitches are better. Here I'm adding a little modulation 
to the modulating oscillator, giving us a little bit of vibrato. Now, the U mod can in fact also do amplitude modulation. And this quadrant selector up here, which is actually a fader, fades our modulation into AM and AM, or from four pole multiplication into two pole multiplication, or the inverse of that. And what you will hear here is the in the in dead center with four quadrant multiplication, nothing remains of the original tone. If we, however, fade it a little into AM, offset it a little bit, we start to hear more of our original tone. And if we speed up the modulator, it becomes easier for us to see on the scope what's happening. As we go dead center, We are no longer seeing a sine wave, but as we move away from center, the sine wave starts to become more apparent again. So, we have these quadrant selectors here, and we were talking about two quadrant and four quadrant multiplication. So what we can actually do on this unit is single quadrant multiplication. So now we are only allowing the positive side of each of the signals to pass through the unit. And as you can see on the scope, we are only seeing the modulation happen within the positive cycle of the sine wave. Now, if we move one of them into center, we get two quadrant multiplication. And if we move both into center, we get four quadrant multiplication. Just a quick recap on the math here. Positive number from 0 to 1 multiplied by positive number from 0 to 1. Positive number 0 to 1 multiplied by a minus 1 up through 0 to plus 1 number minus 2 positive multiplied by minus 2 positive so I hope this explains 1, 2, 4 quadrant multiplication What these uh, knobs actually do is uh, they rectify the signal. So they allow only a single polarity to pass. So this unit is a four quadrant multiplier allowing you to rectify each channel, positive or, or negative, actually half wave rectify, and allows you to fade between two and four quadrant multiplication with this uh, crossfader type control. These two things here, these little knobs here, are attenuators for the incoming signals. So you can simply lower the volume of either one. So what this module has as well, it has, aside from the ring modulation in output, it has some difference min and max. So these are called analog logic outputs. If we have a look at them, if we look at the sum, you will see that the 
carrier and modulator signals are now getting added together in volume giving us uh, a new wave shape this is kind of just like a mixer really now the difference sounds very similar but is in fact the two signals being subtracted from each other gives us a similar result sounding but when working with LFOs and such uh, it can have all the difference the min or minimum gives us the lowest voltage of either signal so you can see how the, the you can see how it works on the scope and the maximum gives us the highest signal at each point in time now when it comes to these outputs the input attenuators become important and you can dramatically change the outcoming shapes by playing with these two knobs so that's the logic outs So as you can see, the uh, U-Mod is, is quite a powerful unit, and if you are working with a big system like mine, being able to send a single LFO into X, and another LFO into Y, at different speeds, maybe one hard synced to the rhythm of the song, and, a, and another one running free, and being able to get the four quadrant multiplication and four other different uh, shapes which you can then place all over your system to modulate things with uh, these controls here which dramatically alter each shape you can see how this would be very powerful so but this uh, tutorial is on VCAs, and uh, we're going to focus on that for now. If we go back to the ring modulation, I wanted to show you what happens if we take sounds other than uh, oscillators and ring modulate them. Here we have some drums. So you can hear that the modulator is affecting the sound of the drums. And maybe we should look at the at the modulated signal. the pitch of our modulator, the change on our drum sound becomes, well, changes. And of course we could program in something that sounds nice with a kick drum, something that sounds nice with a snare, and something that sounds nice with the hi-hats. And have a sequencer move between these or just practice hand wiggling and in time anyway now if we play around with the quadrant settings
we, we can start to get all kinds of weird, noisy, glitchy signals. And if we move the change the shape, wave shape of the car modulator to maybe a triangle. So a lot of possibilities. been focusing on different control types, different language types regarding these uh, VCA units. I think this about wraps up our journey regarding the basic controls, the basic concepts for now. It wraps up our uh, journey into amplitude modulation and ring modulation. I may use these modulation types at a later time for other demonstrations. But I think our next video may focus on either mixing or stereo. I hope everything has been clear so far learned something or laughed at my accent or had fun and uh, yeah I hope to speak to you soon